Well, hi there. These are vampire crabs. And given that we've entered the month of October, they just seem appropriate. There are actually a whole lot of different vampire crabs out there, but they all fall into the genus Geosisarma. And in most ways, they're pretty similar in care. You just keep them in a coffin during the day, avoid exposure to garlic, and feed them blood. Just, just to be clear, uh, don't, don't do any of that. The name vampire crab is a bit misleading. They don't drink blood, though they will at times eat their own offspring. So filial cannibal crabs, that probably makes more sense. That said, most decapods will probably eat their offspring if they're housed in the same box for long enough. So filial cannibal crab might just describe pretty much all crabs. They're omnivores and actually get along pretty well with other vampire crabs, at least of their own species. Really, the only reason I can find for their common name is that their eyes, in many species, these included, are bright yellow and they're most active at night. But whatever you call them, vampire crabs are beautiful. I mean, look at these colors. Like vampires, but unlike most crabs, they live and reproduce primarily on land. Their larvae even develop into mini crabs while still in the egg, so they hatch out as fully formed little crabs. I have to tell you, the first time I ever saw these guys, I fell in love. They were one of the first pets that Leisha and I had after we got married, and I still love them very much. But are these beautiful little yellow-eyed gems good pets. And is the vampire crab the best pet crustacean for you? To help you figure this out, we're going to have to give the vampire crab a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. And I got to tell you, I've been carrying a Ridge Wallet now for several years. In fact, all of us here at Clench Reptiles carry Ridge Wallets. Uh, this is my very first one, the pressed carbon I've, I really liked it. It was basically perfect, but after a while I decided I got this one with the money clip. I wanted the strap instead. I switched over to this guy, which I always called the Stormtrooper. I actually loved it, had a money clip. It was super great, and I've been carrying this one ever since until recently I discovered that Ridge now has leather wallets. They've got them in black, which is what I've been carrying, and brown, which now I'm considering switching over to the brown, and somehow, this might be the most perfect Ridge wallet yet because well, I can get it with the money strap, but also I like that the money strap is leather just like the wallet is. I've loved them. People come into here at Clint Reptile Room all the time and they're like, uh, here's my Ridge wallet. They, they always want to show me the Ridge wallet because they know I carry one. They know what we talk about them here. And I can tell you, no one has ever come in here and been like, I've been disappointed with the Ridge wallet. The Ridge wallet is a fantastic product. I didn't imagine I would be carrying it this long, but the reality is I have just loved it and it's just, it's been the perfect wallet for me. Now they have a lifetime warranty, so it seems a little silly to have three different ones that I've carried. And the reality is even my oldest one that I carried the longest, it still looks great. It's holding up really, really well, but it's just kind of fun. And that's one of the fun things is there's like a million different options with Ridge. Whatever appeals to you the most, they've probably got it. And if you use our link right now, ridge.com slash Clint, you can get your leather or any other Ridge wallet for 10% off. Use promo code Clint to get 10% off your order. That's ridge.com slash Clint. When it comes to handleability, we give the vampire crab a score of four out of five. That's a very high score for a crab. But the reality is that this might be the most handleable crab in the world. The only real issues being that they are small and could be injured by improper or careless handling. And it's probably a bit stressful for them if you do it too often. So you need to be careful while handling them and you need to be careful not to handle them so often that they get stressed out. And that's all for the benefit of the crab. But generally, if I were talking about a crab, I would be primarily concerned with those claws. Crab claws can hurt. When we were catching coconut crabs in Niue, I was a bit worried about having fingers removed by the crab's claws. Good jump. After kindergarten, my family cared for the kindergarten class pet. It was a hermit crab, which is a much smaller hermit crab than the coconut crab, which is a giant hermit crab. And my dad, 
He thought that the, the claws on the little hermit crab were most likely just for show. But it turns out that he was wrong about that. And he let out a mighty scream when he tested his weak claw hypothesis. So even small crabs can pack a wallop. And while these guys do use their claws to incapacitate prey and to defend themselves from predators, they don't really seem to use them on humans. So they aren't going to hurt you. They're also primarily terrestrial, so keeping them out of the water while handling is not really an issue. And they don't run nearly as fast as many crabs, so they aren't likely to get away from you or jump off of you and get hurt as long as you don't keep them too high. And while they're small, they're pretty tough for their size. You could easily crush or injure one, but not nearly as easily as they could kill you if the sizes were reversed, like in Moana. Good thing that crabs are notorious singers and routinely serenade their meals before eating them. Which, uh, now that you mention it, Disney also has humans singing to crabs before eating them. I guess that's something we have in common with the crabs. The point is that this is a remarkably handleable crab. But I'm, I'm suddenly a bit disappointed that they don't sing. When it comes to care, we give the vampire crab a score of 4 out of 5. Really, the main reason that they don't get a 5 is because you need a water feature. And you also need to keep an eye on your water quality. So it's a little bit like keeping a fish tank, but not nearly as difficult because these crabs are primarily terrestrial. And they're tiny. So they're not going to mess up the water nearly as fast as larger aquatic crabs. They are very well suited to a paludarium, which is amazing. Paludariums are some of the most beautiful and interesting enclosures that you can make, but it is hard to find an animal that is really well suited to living in one. Well, good news! Vampire crabs! They're also tiny, so you can keep a few of them in a single 10 gallon or larger enclosure. Some people go even smaller, but 10 gallon enclosures are very common and inexpensive, so why? The difference in footprint is pretty negligible too. Just give them the extra inches. It's literally four inches longer and two inches wider than a five and a half gallon. And it gives you more room for a waterfall and cool plants. The enclosure should be kept around room temperature, somewhere in the mid 70s Fahrenheit ideally, though it can fluctuate a bit higher or lower than that. So in the neighborhood of 24 degrees Celsius or 297 Kelvins. Water should be a bit basic, but not above a pH of 8 or so. Acidic water is hard on crustaceans generally. And do occasional water changes to keep nitrogenous waste levels in check and to keep salts from accumulating. Always be sure that water added to the enclosure is treated and chlorine free. In addition to water changes, nitrogen levels can be kept in check with plants. Pothos is an amazing plant to use in a vampire crab setup because it will grow on land and in the water. Make sure that if your crabs end up in the water, which they will do from time to time, that they have easy ways to get back out, and pothos can help with this also. Even in this temporary enclosure, they've got a little pothos bridge. You should have lights to simulate day and night cycles, and for the plants, but no basking light or anything like that should be needed. And this should be pretty easy in a polydarium, but make sure to keep humidity levels fairly high. When it comes to food, the answer is that they will probably eat it. Basically, any sort of food, alive or not, that you would feed to smaller tropical fish, they will eat. And also insects like crickets and small cockroaches. Their enthusiasm for food is one good reason to keep them only with members of their own species that are roughly their same size. Remember, they, they will eat their babies. But uh, I already told you that. There are many different species of vampire crabs, and their specific care may vary slightly based on the species that you get. So find care sheets specific to the species that you get, or consult with the breeder for more details. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to our patrons in Patreon and tell you about a couple of really exciting things. One of them is uh, many of you who already support us on Patreon know that we have well, our grand opening coming up here in Clint's Reptile Room. And our patrons on Patreon were the first ones to get access to tickets to come attend the many events. But we also recognize that most of you are nowhere close to Clint's Reptile Room and probably a visit here isn't possible. Some of you have been asking if there will be a live stream. And there will, but it will be available only to our patrons at Patreon. So 
If there's ever been a time that you've been considering supporting Clinch Reptiles on Patreon, uh, now would be the time, because that's here in just a couple weeks. All of that said, even with perfect care, your vampire crabs will only live between one and two years, at most, from the time that you get them. And that brings us to hardiness. What score do you give to an animal that is fairly easy to keep alive, but that only lives about two years in the wild or captivity? My answer is uh, four. If you provide your vampire crabs with the care we outlined above, they should live full lives. Be careful with water quality. Don't keep babies with adults, but know that if you get babies and you separate them from the adults, they will live about two years. By the time they reach adulthood, you've only got maybe one year left. And if you get one as an adult, well, who really knows how much of that year is left? It's a devastatingly short life. Now you know how Arwen felt. When it comes to availability, we give the vampire crab a score of five out of five. These guys today are pretty much everywhere. These vampire crabs come to us from Prime Pets in Spanish Fork, Utah. Prime Pets is quickly becoming one of my favorite pet shops. It hasn't always been, but it is recently under new management, and they are really doing amazing things with it. It's definitely worth checking out if you live anywhere near Clint's Reptile Room. But the reality is that I commonly have seen vampire crabs in pet stores for more than a decade now. They're also common at expos and can almost always be found online. The real trick is just finding them captive bred that you can verify are captive bred. They do breed in captivity relatively easily, so they are available, but they're also often taken from the wild, even illegally. Not only are wild-caught crabs likely to be old and unhealthy, but supporting their large-scale harvest could threaten their survival in the wild. So just know where your vampire crabs come from. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the vampire crab a score of 5 out of 5. Vampire crabs are not expensive animals. For something only a bit larger than a cricket that only lives a couple of years, they're a bit spendy, but you can easily get one for less than $20. The aquarium that you'll need will be under $100, sometimes way under $100, just be sure it has a good lid. You'll need at least a good pump for a water feature, a small filter would be even better. Supplies like sand, cork, silicone, moss, and whatever else you use to build a paludarium the way you like. We have a video right here that will show you one good way, but there are others. You'll need water treatment, a variety of fish foods, but nothing there will be all that expensive. And that is why overall we give the vampire crab a score of 4.4 4 out of 5. If what you want is a gloriously beautiful, engaging, entertaining, handleable crab, and you don't mind attending a tiny little funeral every couple of years, then the vampire crab might be the best pet crab for you. But if that might cause you to literally die of a broken heart, let me tell you why tortoises are the best pets. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. That said, most decapitations... Oh wait, no, that's totally the wrong word. Is that, is that crab in French? It's fish. Ah, le poisson, le poisson. How love le poisson. The jack and the sir, little fish. Yep, there you go. Yep, it all makes sense. And then what does zoop talong mean? It's like, bam. Oh. <laughs> zoop talong, I have missed one. Sacre bleu, what is this? How on earth could I miss? Such a sweet and succulent crab. Kaldama, what does that mean? Kaldama, what a loss. Here we go in this sauce. Now some flour, I think, just a dab. Now I stuff you with bread. It don't hurt because you're dead and you're certainly lucky you are. Because it's going to be hot in my big silver pot. Toulou, au revoir. That's something, there's another word in there, but I missed it. You did great. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>